1S LiPo racing, it's um, depending very much on how you get on is the performance of the actual LiPo. Uh, the, the voltage is very low, we're talking about 4 volts and any variation under load that drops that voltage down, you're going to go slower than someone who's got a good battery. So, uh, how do you know how good your uh, battery is? Well, the latest uh, batch of uh, 1S uh, LiPos here are 100C rating, 8,000 milliamps. There's a 7,800 milliamp hour. Also, uh, it's a 100C. Um, here's an IP1 8000, 100 uh, c Also, SHV, super high voltage. Well, we don't use the super high voltage um, charging, but even at normal uh, LiPo cutoff. 4.2 volts. Uh, is it going to be better than these? So, how to test? Well, I've shown how to test uh, 2S batteries uh, using um, a discharger which you can build yourself with resistors and measuring the uh, voltage while it's being discharged at high current and see which one holds up the voltage the best. Now, this um, this discharger, which I did a video on, how to make it using uh, just resistors inside and using one of these little meters, which shows you um, watts, amps, volts, and you can uh, uh, measure the uh, voltage as it discharged and see which one holds up the best. Now, with the 2S one, for instance, uh, if you want to say your motor 30.5 is drawing 3000 milliamp hours in the five minute race, this is 2S, that means it's drawn three amps if it was a one hour race. In the five minute race, well, there are 12 five minutes in an hour, so three times 12, 36 amps average your car draws. And to discharge, make this discharger, it's um, volts over amps you need a 0.20 ohms and I've shown you how to do that, build it up and here is a little resistance meter I've connected to the wires and as you can see 0.197 ohms so that was all great but when you connect um, a 1S up to this the current is only going to be half and also this meter by the way won't work once it goes below about 6 volts but you can power it if you plug in um, a little, uh, this is a 6.6 volt, you can plug it in the side and it'll come on. So you can uh, you can still put a 1S through here and take the readings. If you haven't got one of these, you can get a voltmeter, stick it across the battery leads, measure the volts, and use, say, a stopwatch on your wrist, on your phone, uh, and just write down the voltage as it discharges over every, say, 30 seconds. So uh, that's a pretty simple discharger. But now for 1S, um, how much uh, resistance do you need? So I've got a little uh, 1S chart here. Oops. Uh, again, a five-minute race, say using uh, 3,000 milliamps in five minutes, again, as I said, 36 amps. But you've only got half the voltage, 3.6 volts. So 3.65 by 36.1 of an ohm, i.e. you need two of these in parallel or one of these that has got half the resistance. Instead of 0.2 of an ohm, you need 0.1 of an ohm. So I showed you how to make that before. And as you can see, the uh, dissipations would be 130 watts. So, how to make? You know, I'm going to make up one for doing 1S. Uh, as I said, you need 0.1 of an ohm. Now, these resistors, 100 ohm, not 100, 100 watt resistors, 0.68 ohms they are. They're quite cheap on eBay because they're used in um, road cars for for the indicators or something. If you look around you can find the 0.68s uh, very cheap or buy them from Hong Kong, China and they even cheaper. Uh, these are 6.68s of an ohm uh, comes out to almost 0.1 
it, when they're all wired in parallel. You can buy other values. Say you bought one ohm ones, so you'd need 10 of them to get down to 0.1 ohm. Anyway, uh, they get quite hot. Not very, very hot as if there was just one. You, you burn it out. So you put them in parallel. I'm going to wire these up. Just stick them or screw them to a piece of metal or something. I put these in the box there with a fan. If you haven't got the fan, just um, screw it to a piece of metal so you don't burn yourself and they don't fall around. I'm going to wire these up and show you how it's done. Now, I could then uh, connect up this, or I can use a voltmeter and a stopwatch, and I'll show that as well. So once I've put this together, um, we'll uh, get these out, weigh them, measure them, and uh, and put them on test. Uh, one more thing I'll say about uh, three point, uh, single cells is um, charging them up. Under the rules, you're allowed to charge the 4.20 volts. A lot of charges will do, most charges these days will do 1S, but a lot of them struggle to actually get to 4.2. Uh, some shut off early, and some the, um, the actual metering uh, is not dead accurate. So it's important that you find that your charger is actually charging to 4.20. If you can get a calibrated voltmeter at a track side, charge your battery up and check it against their meter, see if it's how accurate it is. If it's under, you'll need to um, get a better charger and or um, find out why. Always use heavy duty wires so you don't get any voltage losses. And it is some chargers benefit from Connecting the monitor wire into the balance port, even on a 1S, so it, it, it bypasses any losses in the cables and connectors. But that um, shouldn't be necessary if you've got a decent charger. But as I say, some chargers don't do 1Ss very well. Anyway, for comparison purposes, it's not too important. As long as all the batteries are charged exactly the same way, they'd be, I'm going to charge them up on a 1S. And as soon as they're fully charged, put them on the meter. As long as you do all three the same, if you're doing it at home with yours, make sure um, you'll get uh, accurate readings. So don't charge them up, go away and come back next day and discharge them. You should charge them up discharge, uh, and put them on discharge immediately uh, every time so that you get the same readings. Anyway, I'm just going to wire this up and then carry on. I fixed the resistors to the metal plate uh, just by drilling some holes and using um, I put a little bit of white uh, CPU heatsink compound just to uh, transfer the heat. Uh, just drilled the holes. Uh, used some self-tapping uh, screws. These self-drilling screws, which just came through and screwed into the edge of the resistor, so that was all easy. Uh, wired them together using some uh, 16 gauge solid copper wire. If you haven't got any of that, you can get some decent wire out of a bit of household twin and earth that they use for wiring up inside the walls of your house if you've got a bit. Anyway, it's just a solid, nice solid bit of copper. It's easier than using um, trying to solder up uh, the stranded wire because it, it's gets all over the place the strands and then on the end um, I've wired the plus and minus which would go off to your battery uh, if to keep it simple you could just use um, the plus and minus uh, just like that that plug into your battery and you can just plug it in I've got the Deans on there at the moment so I can plug a, uh, the meter in anyway just two wires that go off to your battery if you want, you can put a fan. Um, the voltage is quite low, so the fan's not going to go around very fast. Uh, this is a 5 volt uh, high power fan, but even that's not going to move much air. I just put it on there to show that you can wire it on. Also, it makes a little bit of noise, so it helps uh, helps you know that uh, there is uh, voltage and it hasn't gone flat and it's stopped. Um, so I've wired up the resistors. It almost came out. Uh, I wanted 0.1 of an ohm. Uh, it came out as. Let's just put this meter on. Slightly higher. 
point one one the point be about one two with the wires that's going to be close enough as long as we're going to get a reasonable current so um, now I'm going to show you a couple of ways of, of doing your battery uh, using uh, a voltmeter and um, a stopwatch and then I'll connect up the meter show you how to do that so uh, I'll just connect that up So the easiest way uh, I'm going to show you first to test your uh, LiPo is just have the resistor bank, uh, two heavy duty 12 gauge or nice thick wires to so your plug that plug in here and um, a voltmeter which you connect across the plus and the minus set to DC. Uh, now the voltmeter doesn't have to be uh, calibrated or dead accurate as long as you use the same one on every test that you do. Um, so that it, the comparisons are accurate. Now this one, um, make sure it's on DC, median zero, uh, when you start. And you'll need um, a stopwatch. I've got a stopwatch here, or you can use a stopwatch on your phone or a tablet. And so as soon as you start off, you're going to write down the reading. So you need a chart like this and uh, put the name, uh, as soon as you plug it in, get start voltage and then and start the stopwatch and say take a reading at 15 seconds, then 30, every 30 seconds say and at 5 minutes you can stop or if you want to you can keep going 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 minutes until uh, it goes flat which uh, would normally be um, 3 volts say on the meter and uh, then you unplug it. You can write some notes here, you can measure the temperature, anything you want. So um, I'll just uh, briefly show you how it starts off. You've got your stopwatch, you turn that on, plug, just plug it in. Uh, this isn't fully charged, this battery by the way, it's only about half charged. And uh, plug it in and start the stopwatch at the same time. Write down the initial voltage which was 3.59, just write it in there. And then as the stopwatch is going, uh, as soon as it hits, say, 15 uh, seconds, get a reading, 354. And then you can read it off at 30 seconds. So it's just coming up now. And uh, it's just 3.53. And just keep going and until um, you've got all your readings. So that is the easiest way. By the way, I've got a, an ammeter here. I'll just uh, show you that it's uh, what current it's drawing. Um, just zero this. This is a clamp ammeter, so it only goes around a, one of the wires like so. And you can see it's uh, drawing about 32 amps. So as I said, it's it's um, slightly lower. Well, the voltage is down the bit because it's not fully charged, so it's in the right area that we was aiming for. You won't need an ammeter, but um, let's just check in. There's a little bit of air from the fan. So that's the easiest way of doing it, and uh, you would just keep um, reading, keep doing the readings. Uh, it's just coming up to 1 minute to 30 now, we've got a 3.50, and so on until you've got all the readings recorded along here then you get your next battery so as I said this one wasn't fully charged so I'll just disconnect it when you take everything off check the wires uh, connectors make sure they're not hot if the connectors are badly fitting they get hot if the wires are too flimsy they heat up as well resistors are nice and hot. So that's one way of doing it and I'll just um, connect up uh, a meter, an auto meter now like uh, this Lieber one and show you how you can measure the milliamp way. Here's the way I prefer using a, uh, a meter that shows watts and it can show volts and milliamps. Um, now this only works automatically uh, on its own down to about 6 volts so if you're going to use a 1S battery you have to plug in 
a separate supply on the side. I've used this 6.6 um, .6 volt transmitter battery. It doesn't uh, draw any current uh, hardly, so you just plug it in the side of there. Um, now we're going to, as soon as you set this to the is what, well, I'll show you. There's a couple of readings. You can measure various things on the side, but you want the one that says watts. And as soon as you plug it in, it's going to start reading. So I'll just uh, close in up for you. Um, this isn't fully charged, as I said. And it's the same as before. Um, you can take readings, in this case, at milliamps uh, of the voltage. Now again, the voltage reading on here may not be the same as if you have a voltmeter across there, but it's always going to be um, a, the same readings if you use different batteries. So um, it's only for comparison readings. And as I, you can read it, set it down, uh, the readings, not necessarily at seconds, but at milliamps. So you could take a voltage reading now at every at the start and then every 500 milliamps say so we just plug it in now get the first reading it says 3.45 volts and then uh, the milliamps is going up so you can take um, every few hundred milliamps or 300 uh, we want to get up to 3000 milliamps so um, you need to take it at least at uh, early on and then you can take it out say every 500 milliamps and uh, read the voltages off and uh, you can keep going and measure the whole capacity of the battery with this you can go up to till it goes flat at say 3 volts and see if it's made 8000 milliamps so um, if you haven't got one of these meters just do it uh, the easy way with a stopwatch and a voltmeter and then uh, I'm going to do a comparison test uh, in another video comparing uh, three batteries using this meter.